I'm yeah. 42, and I'd love to bang an 18-year-old. That'd be great. All women want to do is break your heart and break your wallet, so hit it and quit it. Hit it and quit it. To all the other guys out there, whether you're old-fashioned or new-fashioned, wake up. Women are starting to Satan, and we just want to have as many babies that we can get the most child support that we can. It's like saying the laws of gravity affect men and women differently, or, you know, different groups of people differently. Well, the laws of gravity do affect women differently. Just go to Portland, Oregon and take a look around. My boyfriend's dad is listening to you or whatever, and he is a cop. Like, he seriously is a piece of crap. And now my boyfriend is starting to listen to you. So I oh, think good. every every guy that listens to you is a piece of crap. I watch the Super Bowl by myself this year because people watch it. They put on the big front like they're big football fans. And, I mean, it's just annoying. Yeah, they're, they're Tostito fans. Yep, you know it. You know what team they're a fan of? The Buffalo Wings. I think that there should be more men that should put their foot down and know that if a girl really likes them and wants to sleep with them, she, she's not going to need dinner to do that. So well, that's I what I always say. But a vagina is just a big collection plate. It is. I have a good idea for you guys. Uh, when you go to a bar or something or a dance club and people leave their beers on the side and a girl asks you to buy her a beer, just get, grab that beer and take it to her. Don't let her see you, though. And then if she asks you, hey, this beer's half drank, I'll be like, well, I took a sip. I'm buying it for you. Don't be so stingy. And she'll drink it anyway. And there's a free <laughs> beer, baby. <laughs> I think you'd use the word, uh, what is it, whore too loosely. I don't think all women are like that. I and didn't. Wait, wait, wait. I never said all women are whore. Well, you use it very loosely. I can use, well, the whores are loose, so I'm using it loosely. Sometimes I make a date to go out with them. I do your rule. I say to them, what time are you having dinner? And then I say, I'll meet you for drinks afterwards. And then when they start demanding dinner to get together, I say, okay, let me make a reservation. And I call them back and I say, look, I'm going to meet you at the restaurant. Get all dressed up and go to the restaurant. The only problem is I never show up. <laughs> People always say to me, they say, um, do you have a daughter? They get so upset when I have these conversations. Well, do you have a daughter? I, I usually tell them. I say, no, I usually have somebody else's daughter. <laughs> Sometimes twice. I know somebody that has a dog in replace of a man. Well, when, when that happens, you're never going to have a man. It becomes a foregone conclusion. Let me tell you, um, it trips me out because they get the light on when no one's home. Why do they need the light on? What do they care? They're going to sleep anyway. That's exactly right. What are they going to They're going to read, uh, curl up and read a book while you're gone or something? So when you bounce from, from one 18-year-old to another 18-year-old to a 19-year-old to a 17 to a 20... I don't it, bounce it, to 17-year-olds, so let's get off that subject. I just don't do it. Yeah. But 18-year-old uh, to 18-year-old to 18-year-old to 19-year-old to 18-year-old? Sounds pretty good to me. Go to family court and make him pay and be done with it. Yeah, it's not just about making pay, though. It's no, you want to make him pay by him having to listen to the sound of your voice. Talking about the MySpace thing. You know, I'm pimping so hard on there. Oh, and, and, and rightly so. It's a great place to pick up chicks. Pimping so hard. <laughs> From somewhere in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Really? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. On a just an amazing Friday here in Southern California and hopefully wherever you are. With wide open telephones on the Tom Lika Show. Anything goes, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. 
Talk about some of the issues we discussed earlier this week. You remember what those were? That's why we did the little montage at the beginning of some of the hours of the show on Friday. We talked about uh, Vinny and Sal and Guido celebrating the Super Bowl and being completely obnoxious. Oh, yeah. We talked about how some women's groups think the economic stimulus package isn't stimulating enough for women. Women want a little more green stimulation. Yeah. How about the, remember we talked about the girlfriend of uh, Cedric Wilson, the the player for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The girlfriend was threatening to kill herself and he told her to go ahead and do it. <laughs> and we were wondering whether, uh, whether he had any obligation to do anything to the contrary. I say no, but. Some people beg to differ. And, of course, we talked about uh, the relationship between 30-year-old Milo Ventimiglia and 18-year-old Hayden Panettiere. And we were wondering whether you agreed with the uh, actor Thomas Decker, who was once on Heroes with Milo. And uh, he thought the relationship was creepy. Because Milo's 12 years older than Hayden. It's like, come on. Stupid. So we can talk about any of the things we talked about this week, or how about some of the things we didn't talk about this week. We just spent any time talking about Super Tuesday. <laughs> Let's see how many calls we get about that today. Super Tuesday. At least that Mormon Mitt Romney is gone. <sighs> is he annoying or what? Yeah. So, if you happen to be interested in that kind of thing, you can certainly call and talk about it. My guess, you're not. I don't care what they say about young people being fascinated by the political process. Uh, also, uh, Shaquille O'Neal. We didn't talk about this at all. Because why would you devote an entire hour to this? Shaquille O'Neal, who we adored in his years playing with the Los Angeles Lakers and winning those three back-to-back -back titles. We loved him to death. Then in a very controversial move, Dr. Jerry Buss, the owner of the Lakers, had Shaq shipped away to the Miami Heat. And uh, that's, how the, uh, that's how the Lakers got uh, Lamar Odom, by the way. He went there and won another championship, and meanwhile, Kobe was winning nothing. So lots of people question that move. And now, of course, we all know that, that Shaq is uh, not what he used to be. I mean, the guy's 36 years old, and his, his average points per game now is down to about 14. It had always been in the mid to upper 20s. A lot of people think Shaq ain't what he used to be. But uh, the people in Phoenix are hoping otherwise. So you've got this fast break team playing with the Incredible Hulk. What's that going to be like? Somebody probably has an opinion about that, and I'm sure we'll hear about it. Ah, uh, Brittany, in and out and in and out and in and out of rehab. And I must say, our good friend Pat O'Brien, I can't say where we're located, but Pat works in the neighborhood. And, uh, I must say he is a television professional because why go into rehab if you're in TV unless it's sweeps month? And, uh, I, you know, my opinion is that, uh, you know, this is timed. You know, I mean, if you need to go into rehab, hang out, wait until February. Wait until it's the middle of sweeps. That's what you do. Then when you come out of rehab later on, make your big appearance again on Dr. Phil or whatever, and just the, the numbers are huge. This has not hurt Pat in the past, and uh, of course all our good wishes go to our friend Pat O'Brien. But uh, did you know that? Pat is back in rehab, you know. So anyway, uh, we can talk about those issues. We did not discuss those this week, but we certainly can. Uh, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. And if you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. 
Our screener, Dean J. D'Amelio, is also our bouncer. And he works for the Louisville Slugger, and if you call in here and you're not appropriate for air, he will swing it. So all you have to do is, if you want to participate, is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. All right, it's Friday. Your telephone calls are coming up. Tom Light 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I've been gone from it for about two years now, and it is just clear saying it is worth it. Now I go out all the time with different girls. It's a blast. Now, I don't know what I was thinking, imprisoning myself. It's the Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Likes Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas Show. Mario on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. Hey, how you doing, son? Real good. Calling you from L.A. And um, what did you think about that trade? I think Shaq is too old and too beat up to run with the running gun friends. What kind of trade is that? Uh, well, look, Shaq might have value for certain teams. I just don't think the Phoenix Suns are one of them because, you know, that's a fast break team. It's run and gun indeed. Now, run and gun never wins championships. Never, ever, ever. It doesn't. But um, the thing is, I, I don't know that just sticking Shaq in the middle of a run and gun team is the way to fix the Phoenix Suns. Maybe if the reason they brought him in was just to beat up on Bynum and maybe knock him out of the game or something. Maybe he could sit on him for a while or something. Uh, all I can imagine, the only role I can imagine for Shaq is that uh, they nail his feet to the floor <laughs> under under the opponent's basket. He gets the rebound and throws it out to uh, one of the Suns players. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of three-second violations. What do you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think so. Um, how about the way his wife and him um, divorced? Did you hear that story? Or what's your take on that story? Well, I did see, I guess it was the smoking gun that had that whole list of... Uh, of Shaq's expenses and uh, all the dirty details of that. Uh, we, You know, as with any divorce case, you never really know what's going on because each side, especially when people are public figures, uh, will uh, release allegations and numbers and stuff to make the other side look bad. True, but there have been rumors for a long time about him having an open marriage. And what they're saying is that Apparently, she was thinking the rules applied for her the same way. And when he found out, that was it. Yeah, but again, we don't know if that's true. That's an still another rumor you're reporting here, but <laughs> you haven't reported any facts here at all. It's a great star, though, isn't it? Well, you know, rumors are great because you can make up anything you want. Uh, you can speculate anything you want, and then you can revel in what you've created. But uh, in the reality of it all, uh, we don't know what happened between these two adults. Who, okay, but, who lived together for many years without being married, and apparently uh, it worked really well for them. And then when they finally got married, like so many people, that's when things started to, to come apart. All right, Tom, but I mean, think we can't really think he's the smartest guy around. I mean, when a woman makes you an offer like that, just go ahead and play around as much as you want. Just don't bring it home. I mean, do you really, really think a woman's capable of giving an offer like that and standing behind it? Well, we don't know if she did that. You wouldn't trust a woman who told you that, would you, Tom? What's that? You would never believe a star like that, would you? Well, put it this way. If I made $20 million a year, and I had five children, and I got married, presumably without much of a prenup, um, I would uh, think that that was like uh, trying to trick me if somebody made an offer like that. But we don't know that Shaquille O'Neal was ever made an offer like that. Well, you know what? I'm a Laker fan, so he's an idiot anyway in my book. Take me out um, African school kid style, please. African school kid style, okay. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge, 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 so penza. Kotale nenge, asika mama. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jeffrey on the Tom Likas Show. Hey, how's it going, Father? It's going great. How's your weekend, how's your weekend going to be? I don't know yet. I haven't gotten there yet. Uh, any big plans or what? 
My big plan, you know, I uh, I closed on my northern compound yesterday. And so my big plan is to go visit my, my new 20-acre property and uh, spend the weekend up there. Uh, it sounds like fun. It sounds like fun. Oh, anyway, yeah. Anyway, so I want to call about, you know, when I, when I was a senior in high school, man, I just pissed me off, man. I wanted to date the hot girls, but I couldn't, you know. Obviously, they're dating the older guys with money and cars and everything, you know. But, I mean, as soon as I high school, I, I started tuning into you and started learning everything about the like is one-on-one, you know. And, you know, I trained myself, you know, I started making uh, big bucks. I'm 24 now, and, man, now I'm dating the 18-year-old hot girls. You know, I'm living life to the fullest, and I'm loving it. But, I mean, the funniest part about it is uh, I run into these girls from high school, and, you know, they're always they're surprised the way, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, my status now, you know? And I'm sure they are. Oh, trust me, man. I run into these girls all the time, and, you know, they're always trying to set dates, and I'm like, oh, no, nah, I, don't, I don't have time for you anymore. Like, I don't have time. You didn't give me the time of the day back then? Why should I give you, you know? Yeah, anybody who turned that? me down previously, that's it. You know, I I will not t I will not drive a car once someone else put 50,000 miles on it, okay? Oh, yeah. I want it right out of the showroom, and if I can't get it right out of the showroom, uh, I'm not interested down the line. Yeah, exactly, man. A lot of these girls are not the, they're not the, what they used to be, you know, when they were in high school, you know, so you could tell they got, you know, a couple of miles in them already, you know, so now... Yeah, see, now like, now you're in a position to say no like they were back then. Oh, yeah, and I just love it, man. It's a good feeling, you know, when you turn these bitches down, you know? And what's great, here's here's the great part about this, Jeffrey. Uh, you see, as a man, as you get older, you continue to become more valuable in every way. You're more secure, more money, more success. Women's value declines over the years, like that exchange we saw on Craigslist about a woman being a depreciating asset. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's sort of true, you know. And now, I'm a, I come from a Mexican heritage, you know, and all my aunts are always wondering, you know, when am I going to get married? You know, I, I, I'm old enough to get a, you know, a wife and support a family, you know. But you know, I tell them, you know what? No, I'm living life to the fullest, and you know, I see these little guys that have, you know, long-term relationships or married. You know, these guys are miserable, you know, they, they, they really have no future up ahead of themselves because they, 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 never, they, didn't, they didn't really set themselves up for the future, you know. That's right. So now, you know, I tell them, you know, you know what, I just don't really see myself getting married anytime soon or later, you know. I'm so proud of you, Jeffrey. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I especially love your advice financially, wise, man. I've, I've learned so much about you, like about that, and I really appreciate all your financial advice you give everybody out there, you know. Is it working for you? Oh, trust me, man. I save my money. I, I mean, I make close to six-figure income, but, I mean, I save, and I, and I try to invest as, as best possible, you know? Uh-huh. And I, I and I really like that magazine that you tuned everybody into, you know, Investors Magazine. Yeah. That, that's a good magazine, man. I, I didn't really know anything about investing back in the day, but now, you know, I'm learning a lot more, especially in listening to you, you know? But anyway, Tom, you know, take me out a uh, fart stutter. Take you out what? A uh, farting stutter. Oh, a, st a stuttering fart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll All right, one. here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. Edgar on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Nice talking to you. And I'm sure it is. <laughs> well, uh, anyhow, just giving you a ring here because uh, you know we I heard you know first uh, what you were talking about earlier regarding uh, the political race going on. Want well, to get your takes on who you think is going to be um, the nominee for the Democratic Party and who you think has the best shot with uh, against John McCain? Well, I don't think anybody knows for sure, and anybody who says they do is lying because all Super Tuesday did, rather than confirming who the nominees are going to be, uh, it confirmed who the Republican nominee is going to be, but it made it even more confusing on the Democratic side. Uh, I mean, the, the, the victories that each side had... This is a very tight race for the Democratic nomination. I don't remember a race like this in, in decades, maybe in my entire life. Part of the reason for that is probably because this is the, did you know this? This is the first election in my lifetime. Uh, that goes back to 1952. Do you know, do you know what this is the first election of? Do you know what it is? The first race, I'm sorry, I did not hear the last All part. Right, here's my question. Something is happening in this election that hasn't happened since 1952. What is it? Right. Do you know what? It, right is not the answer. I, that's a yes, I know, or no, I don't know. What, something is different this year. Oh, oh, okay. I, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. The, my phone is cutting off, but um, oh. 
Um, you know, I, I, I cannot, I cannot understand your question, but it is a most exciting race they, that I. All right, you had. <laughs> Now, now I'm now I'm driven. I'm compelled to to get through this. There were elections in 2004, 2000, 1996, 1992, 1988, 1984, 1980, 1976, 1972, 1968, 1964, 1960, 1956. Something is different this time from all those elections. What is it? Uh, I believe that the excitement that uh, that has been generated. No, is- no, not we're not talking about something intangible. This is a specific fact, a specific factual thing that's different this time. Well, aside from uh, that, we have uh, two candidates that are uh, one of them is uh, African American and the other one's uh, a woman. Is no, that- well, no, but whatever it is, it happened in 1952. And it hasn't happened since. Was there an African American candidate in 1952? Was it George Washington Carver? Uh, uh, obviously not. No. So I have no idea. Was there a woman in 1952? No. No. Okay. So what is it that happened for the last time in 1952 and didn't happen again till this year? No idea. This is the. Thank God we're getting to this point now. This is the first election since 1952 where none of the candidates are the president, the incumbent president, or the incumbent vice president. Wow, that is something I did not, uh, I wasn't aware of. Really? <laughs> well, that, well that, but it, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's, it's definitely stirring the pot this election. I think it's getting a lot more people involved. Um, just my take on it is basically that I believe that, uh, you know, Seeing the Democratic side and seeing how Hillary is running her campaign compared to Obama, it doesn't seem to me that she has a uh, a firm stance on anything. And I think she's just uh, trying to get votes uh, here and there, and just um, does not seem to me like like she she's uh, much of a leader. I don't know what what you. Well, think about I don't that. know, uh, Edgar. I'm assuming you're Latino, and I don't know if you've seen the TV commercials, the blatant pandering to Latinos in these Hillary Clinton commercials. Um, when in reality, I mean. She hasn't been a U.S. senator all that long. What has she done for Latinos, and why do Latinos support her in such big numbers? I don't get it. Exactly, especially because she voted against uh, the driving licenses. So, I mean, uh, Barack was was for uh, the driving licenses all along. So why would uh, why would they be supporting her? It doesn't make sense that she's getting such a wide support from Latinos. But I think it goes back to us being so loyal, and I think uh, just... Uh, for example, and I'm sure you know this, uh, you know, with advertising, and we usually stick to a brand, and, and it's very hard to get us away from those brands. Uh, uh, I know I that's true. I know that's true with our show, for that matter. We have a very loyal Latino audience, and they're always with us, which is fantastic. Uh, yeah, exactly. And exactly. And I think the Clinton name has resonated that, and and they've, uh, you know, they, they've been able to to hold that hold on to that brand. But unfortunately, uh, they don't see the bad things that uh, Hillary has. Uh, you know, has has done for against Latinos, really. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I obviously I am, you know, voting for Barack because I, I do see him, uh, you know, also the fact that he is not taking money from large corporations. And, you know, that's that's something that obviously uh, resonates with me because I, I think he's trying to work at least more for the people and and my Latino stance as well. So that's those are just a couple of points I wanted to make, you know, regarding that. Look at that. We got a call in the in the first part of this hour. We got a call about politics. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, there are some of us, are your listeners, that, that really do care about this. And, you know, we, we see it as uh, part of, you know, the, the future. And that, I, obviously, I think it's a lot more important than, than the Super Bowl. And, and well, I want okay. everybody to know that when we do open phones, I'm not kidding. I, if there's a call about politics, we'll put it on. Uh, generally, yeah. we don't get a lot of calls about politics. I mean, we should because, especially your show is a lot more liberal, and we don't have this, uh, you know, chance to to express, uh, you know, as freely as as uh, other stations do. So, I mean, it's important for, uh, to to have a chance for that. And and last but not least, this is a little bit off subject, but um, you know, I, obviously, I'm a big fan of the show, and you know, I, I love everything that that um, you know you put on. But what about you know? Because I, I do quite a bit of traveling myself. I, I would like to you know have a little more of a, a brainstorm session regarding the best places to go out and about traveling. Because I mean I, I've traveled to Russia, Brazil, um, Colombia, you name it. You know, and I mean there are some very good girls. Well, there, I, as you know. I will tell you. I'll tell you some great places to go. Well, Colombia is spectacular. If you're looking for girls, Colombia spectacular. Cartagena is good, and you know where it's I, I was there? Pereira. There's a city called Pereira, which is underneath uh, Medellin. 
And really? uh, it, it is it is incredible. Uh, I agree with that. I by the way, I'm I'm the American who goes all the places Americans don't go. So when I was in Colombia, I didn't see any Americans. I was also in another place Americans don't go. Biarritz, France. Which is near the border, Biarritz, it's near the border with Spain. It's in the Basque region of France. Mm. And uh, it's one of the surfing capitals of the world, and it's devoid of Americans. Americans think Americans think Biarritz is, is an old car brand, like Cadillac Biarritz. But right. it's, it's actually a place. Mm. I wasn't aware of it, so that's in the up in the Basque region. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, part it's, they speak French and well, cat, cat, I guess they speak Catalan, right? Uh, around them. no, 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 they speak the Basque language. Whatever, they, then that's not Catalan. That's uh, what do they call that language? It's not that's Catalan. Between French and Spanish, Catalan they speak in Barcelona. Right, right, and and I got a chance to go there, but I got to tell you, the the Spanish girls do not compare the Colombian girls. I completely agree with that. In fact, in Madrid, I saw some of the homeliest. Lesbified chicks I've ever seen. It was like going to New York or Boston. It was bad. And the route too. Uh, I mean, it's just a bad combination. I couldn't get you know wait to get out of there. I mean, I love Barcelona as a city. It's 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 great. But I mean, these these girls are just do not compare well, to Mexican no, girls but, or Colombian girls. But but, or, but believe me, I don't know if you got to Madrid, but Madrid is the worst. No, after I saw Barcelona, I had to get the hell out of there. I was like, I, oh, I got to go no, back no. to Paris or somewhere. Well, Madrid's a great city, but the women, I mean, it's a bunch of lesbified unibrows walking around there. It's really scary yeah. bad. That's a place I'm going to go, you know, way down the line, you know, when I have a, you know, serious girlfriend and I, you know, I, I know I'm not going to be uh, chasing skirts, you know, when I'm out there. So I'm, I'm going to save that trip, you know, when I'm... Right. Yeah, exactly. When you have a girlfriend who wants to go see museums. Perfect. Exactly. Ah. Exactly. There, there are certain places, you know, because I, you know, I'm a, I, I, I love traveling, you know, and yeah. there are certain places that I will not go until, uh, you know, I'm... I'm going to go with with a particular woman because i mean i'm not going to be chasing skirts for example in uh you know i would love to go to the middle east but who knows what would happen if i try to you know do that out there right you know, come back uh would not not with everything you know exactly right yeah but i mean i mean i, I don't know if you've been to eastern europe but i mean uh prague is great uh love prague it's uh it's one of my favorite places and in fact that was my number one spot before rio de janeiro which so well, if you that. want to see if you want to see hot chicks, Italy. Italy is unbelievable. I, I agree. I, I just came back last summer. I was in Tuscany and Rome, uh -huh. and all the places in between. You know, anywhere from Florence and Siena to Pisa, everything between Florence all the way down to Rome. I, I would love to, you know, next time take a trip south, like Naples or yeah. somewhere. Because I think they're a little more traditional, and that will be great. Because I mean, they are they are amazing looking. Uh, I, I gotta agree, but I would I would still like to get the more traditional type. And by the and way, you, a lot more blondes in Italy than you would think. It's great. It's great. Um, have you had a chance to go to any Eastern Europe? Not yet, and I want to. That's definitely in the plan for sure. Edgar, I gotta run. Great call. Thank you. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. Like this. In this day and age, for a man to get married, he's only looking to lose. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Oh, yeah, wide open telephones. There we go. By the way, writer's strike. It's all but over. Michael Eisner said it was over yesterday on CNBC. Uh, everything you read, it's over. They're going back to work on Monday. Which means sometime in May you'll see new shows. Oh, boy. So uh, plan your social calendar accordingly. <laughs> I think the best thing about the TV strike is we've all learned how, how, how little we really care about TV. We'll watch any crap. We don't care. Doesn't matter. I mean, seriously speaking, and, and no knock on the writers. I have friends who are writers, okay? It's no knock on the writers. It's just a knock on TV in general. I mean, really, has your life been demonstrably worse while there have been no new episodes of Grey's Anatomy? <laughs> Seriously. Are you kidding me? 
I've watched more sports. I burn off more TiVo. I spend more time with my friends. Life has been great. I bought another house. Drank more wine. Uh, you know what? I watch my favorite show. I've been watching my favorite show. It's my fireplace. Throw a few logs in. I've got a huge fireplace. I'll tell you what, watching my fireplace is easily as interesting as two thirds of the shows on TV. So, whoopee, the writers are going back to work, but will anybody be watching anymore by the time they get there? <laughs> I'll bet a writer will call in now. 1 800 5 800 Tom, that's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Victoria on the Tom Likas show. Hi, Tom. I'm calling in regards to the guy that called earlier, the 24-year-old that dates high school girls. Yeah. To him, I have to say he something must be wrong with him if in high school you couldn't get girls right, so you wait till you're 24 to start dating girls that are 18. He's a pervert in my eyes. Like something is. Why? Wrong. What makes him a pervert? Who does that? You're 24 dating high school girls. No, no, no. I'm talking. You can't get girls his age. No, no, no. I, I, look, I, I do believe, let's start with this. I don't know anybody who does that. And, uh -huh. and anybody can call in on a radio show and claim they do that. But the, this conversation started about adults who are dating. Someone who's 30 dating somebody who's 18. Do you think that person's a pervert? I think something is wrong with them. Why do you think that? Because apparently, you, why are you dating an 18 year old if you can't? Can because you, you can. Age? Because you can. That's why you do it. He, he can't get girls your age. No, no. It's not that you can't get girls your age. It's that what man would choose a woman who's 30 if they could get one who's 18? Someone who's pretty confused. Why, why would that make them confused? You see, men are attracted to how hot you are. True. And when you're 18, hate to say it, darling, you're hotter than when you're 30. I guess. I still think something is wrong with these people. But why? But why? I want to understand the reason. What? What makes it's that? Just, what makes that true? Doesn't sit well. Like I've had older guys. Doesn't sit well with, with you. Yes, I've had. I'm 19, and I've had older guys as far as 28, 29, 30 try to talk to me. And in my eyes, I'm thinking, hmm, something is wrong with you. If you're talk, trying to talk, well, to you may be girl. thinking that, but you know why they're talking to you? Because other 19 year olds are saying yes. True. Uh, they, they wouldn't even try if the others weren't saying yes. And by the way, when you say no, that's fine. Someone else around the corner and up the block will say yes. Very true. So, I mean, the, the reality is, look, let's be realistic. Uh, women, uh, I'm talking women now. I'm not talking mm -hmm. about teenagers or little girls. I'm talking about women, 18 plus. Okay. Women are hotter the younger they are. I will admit to that, yes. Yeah. All right. So if a man if a man is 30, but he's a famous actor and he's got money and good looks, and he can get an 18-year-old, why would he date someone who's 30 or older? You know what? I don't know, but it just doesn't fit right. Just doesn't well, well that's, fine with, that's fine. You don't have to date anybody who's 30. But plenty of women do because they would like to be with a guy who's rich and successful and famous. Money, power, and fame. I talk about it all the time. Get you anything. That, well, that, that's, that's exactly right. Women will do <laughs> anything to be around money, power, and fame. Now, you may not be one of them, but, you, but you're not the majority. Very true. You see? Well, very true. I agree. Well, your show is awesome. I just started listening about a month ago, and I am addicted. <laughs> I love that. I am addicted. Thank you, Victoria. Right. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. This is David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? I'm okay. Hey, first of all, uh, that girl who just called in right now saying uh, why you would date the younger girls. Like, I, I'm 22, and she's, what, 23? And look how easily manipulated she is <laughs> just by you, by telling her she had a mindset calling in saying, <laughs> uh, you know, these people must be weirdos. But look how easily you convinced her. That's how easily how easily we can convince, uh, you know, 19, 18-year-olds to uh, basically get in the sack with us. But uh, that, that's not what I want to talk about. I wanted to talk about quickly was um, do you think that even if Hillary or Barack Obama win uh, the Democratic primary, that uh, 
either of them would be even elected president, or do you think that the the Republicans are just going to tear tear him a new a hole? I think the Republicans are going to do what they always do. Yep. They're going to be going through the garbage cans of whoever wins the Democratic nomination, the dumpsters. They're going to be looking at YouTube videos. Uh, they're going to find ways to uh, 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 pass on bad information, uh, false rumors and things like that, uh, to see if there's any way they can ruin whoever the candidate is for the Democrats. Right. And like, if, even if you look in, in the past in history and time of war, there have been very, very few, if any, uh, uh, ship jumping, as they would call it, from uh, you know one party to the other. And I just don't. Well, people don't say that, but I might, I might remind you that uh, during the Vietnam War, uh, we went uh, from uh, the Democratic Party in 1968 of Lyndon Johnson to the Republican Party of Richard Nixon. It's very true. All um, right, that's that's one example right there. I just, it's just, you know, I've always been a loyal, uh, fa- you know, loyal. Um, voting party down party lines as far as democrats go but uh unfortunately i just don't think that uh, either of these candidates will be able to uh win over the whole united states vote but uh you know, uh, you know i i think I, everything we've believed in the past is up for grabs this year um and there's any number of reasons for it whether it's the internet whether it is the fact that uh, for whatever reason barack obama has gotten young people somewhat interested in politics for the first time uh, really in 35 years Mm-hmm. Um, I, but the, there, are, there is clearly something afoot here. There's something going on. I Frankly, if you told me John McCain would be the nominee of the Republican Party, I'd have laughed my ass off. Well, and here he is. And you're right. You know what I mean? You're right. Like, I, I guess it's, uh, I don't want to say it's the, the lesser of two evils, but, uh, you know, I would still, I'm still going to vote Democrat, uh, you know, regardless, but, uh, I just unfortunately don't see uh, the Democrats winning this year. Well, we don't know until uh, we see how the uh, the campaign plays out. My belief about John McCain is that he's a powder keg, and there will be some Don Imus-type gaffe that will happen between now and Election Day. It's very, very possible, very true. And you know what? Well, I'd like to be taken out with a bong rip uh, with no cough, thanks. There you go, David. No cough. Thomas on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. Hello, Tom. Hello. How are you doing, Tom? Great. Oh, man. So I just wanted to bring back a conversation you were talking about on Tuesday. Yeah. Um, about, I'm, I'm so excited to be talking to you, um, about how people how people listen to you and then you change their lives. And, you know, it's, it's the truth. Uh, six months ago, my friend was, you know, hey, you know, you have to listen to Tom. You're in California. Why don't you listen to Tom? So every time we would be in the car, he would put him on, put you on, and and you know what? The the truth is, you do change our lives. Um, I had a girlfriend at the time. I'm 21 years old, and you know I, I don't know how many times I've heard you say now, don't you know don't have a girlfriend, dump that bitch, you know. And it's it's the truth how much you've helped. I I didn't have a job then, and you know now I'm now I'm 21 years old. I'm single. I have a job, I'm making money, and it's my money. You know, it's not the girl's money. Isn't that great? And uh, by the way, uh, you save that and invest that, and down the line, uh, you will get the woman you really deserve. Who, you know, currently uh, she is uh, in the ninth grade. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, I just wanted to say thank you, and I think you're doing a great job, Tom. Uh, keep up the good work. And if you could take me out with bong rip with no cough, I certainly can. Here you go. No cough. James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How are you doing? Great. Hey, uh, I was wondering what your opinion on, uh, not that it really matters too much anymore, because he's not going to be the uh, primary, and everybody pretty much knew he wasn't going to, but uh, Ron Paul, what's your uh, what was your opinion of uh, Ron Paul? Uh, nobody who was ever the presidential candidate of the Libertarian Party will ever be the president of the United States. But what's your, is your, uh, I know you had said before that if you were to, uh, uh, belong to a, a party, it would be libertarian. No, I never said that. I would never belong to the libertarian party. I said I'm a small L libertarian. But oh, I think okay. I think the people in the libertarian party are loons. Just loons. I think most of America feels the same way. The Tom Likas Show.